We are doing a project to raise awareness on campus. I've teamed up with fellow students about something religious involving Christianity. And so we decided to focus on this area. We can hopefully educate them in a mature way and that they can see that history does repeat itself. My role I see with regard to this campus project is to do everything I can to support the students. This campus is a bit too quiet. There's so much dark history that America has. Nobody knows about this whole thing and it's a really dark part of America's history that we kind of shuffled under the rug that we need to address because it's really important and this campus would appreciate it when we get it off the ground. Christianity plays a big role in this project. It not only has to do with it being the pre predominant religion of the time, but it also has to do with symbolism. Hi, my name is Jamin Watson. I'm a senior here at California Lutheran University. I'm a multimedia major. I talk with a lot of peers on campus and they're like, oh yeah, we maybe talked about that in middle school for like two minutes. They're like, oh, people were lynched, that's it. I feel that as a university, it is our job to be global leaders. When we're talking about America, we want people to, to know and understand what has happened. My name is Alex Stevens. I am studying criminal justice and I am a sophomore. We plan to recreate a lynching scene and have um, dummies hanging from like a light post or a tree, wherever we decide it works best. And we're basically making a memorial um, that commemorates victims of lynching in America. My name is Jessica Boltz. I am a freshman and I study psychology. I am in this project because first off we are required to do something powerful whether it's peaceful or violent on campus and I believe that it is important to highlight what is going on in America in the past and what is still going on today and to not let it hide in our shadow of American history. In today and age people don't talk about like stuff that America used to do like they hear about hate crimes, they think of the Nazis and like Germany and the Holocaust. They never really associate with racial terrorism, extermination of the Native Americans. They don't really associate that with America. And I like to think that this project would just bring awareness that if we focus a little bit on the past, we can make a better future. My name is Thomas Rapp. I'm a history major at Cal Lutheran University. I grew up in Palmdale, and I plan to become a history teacher. My name is Allison Cervelli. I'm a freshman, and I'm a multimedia major. In this Campus Awareness Project, I plan to, I'm doing the research that I can do that's being sent to me. I'm making sure I'm informed. I've been contacting Dr. Gill, who's the head of the Center for the uh, for Equality and Justice and just making sure everything's running smoothly and I'll be there to help set everything up and do the best I can. My name is Leighton Bowman. I'm a freshman and I'm studying business at Cal Lutheran University. The main goal for this project is that the students that see this display are intrigued by it. That it does not only memorialize all the lives lost, but it brings awareness to what happened. I think white supremacy still exists in America. We see it with direct violence that we have um, seen in news. I mean, not just people that are hardcore white power groups, or but with people 
that they think that they can just do things to other minorities that um, it wouldn't be okay in any circumstance. So I've been here since 2011. I've had students do some campus projects that have to do with raising awareness of contemporary moral issues, but nothing as close to home as this issue, and nothing that corresponds timing-wise to, um, to related issues that the U.S. society is um, sort of embroiled in at the moment. And so in the wake of Ferguson and subsequent cases that have drawn national attention of um, African Americans um, in relationship or interacting with uh, law enforcement, that um, this um, issue is um, it's just on everybody's minds. And so I think that um, connecting it to our historical past is going to be an opportunity for people to be better educated and also to set current events in historical context. My name is Victor Thazia, and I'm a professor in the Department of Religion here at California Lutheran University. This project is really important, and it's going to be a vital part of the education of students both in the class um, violence, religion, and ethics this semester, but also for our campus community. I think it's an American history that's little known, still has a significant effect on our life and society here in America, and so when you combine something that has a powerful effect but is relatively unknown, then you're in a situation where there's a lot of ignorance. And so this campus project, according to my view, is really crucial for our campus um, to um, be better informed about American history. James Allen has collected a photographic record of racial violence in the South. For the past 20 years, he's found horrifying pictures in the family albums of ordinary Southern homes. Many are postcards that were mass-produced as souvenirs. Some of these images were printed in the tens of thousands and sold for a dime or a dollar a piece. Some of the postcards tell you where to write and the discounts you'll get if you buy one, ten, or a hundred. They were sold in drugstores and pharmacies. They were sold on the street. I purchased a photograph from a woman. The photographer sold them door to door. Her mother bought the image for two bucks. A murder that is of particular interest to me was of a 17-year-old boy by the name of Jess Washington in Waco, Texas, in 1916. He was Men seriously mentally challenged. The wife of the farmer that he worked for was found dead. He was arrested. He was brought to trial. The trial took from 10 until 12. And when the jury came back at noon and found him guilty, someone in the courtroom, and it could have been, would have been anyone in the courtroom, screamed out, get that nigger. <laughs> in one of the worst and cruelest treatments of a human being began. Jess was kicked down out of the courthouse, down the back steps where a crowd of several hundred was waiting for him. They put a chain on his neck. There were 16,000 people crowding the street to watch this boy be tortured. Jess was tied to the chain over a branch of a tree. The fire was started. They raised Jess from the fire up into the air so that the crowd could see him. There were cheers, like at a football game, cheering the torturers on. When Jess tried to climb up the chain, hand by hand, they cut his fingers off one by one so that all he could do was slap at the chain. They lowered him back down in the fire. A man came up and castrated him. Another man kept a pole so that he couldn't crawl out of the fire. And time and again, they pulled him up to keep him from dying so that the crowd could be satisfied. 
until he finally died. I believe Christianity plays a role in this project and in what occurred in the past because the people, more specifically men who committed these crimes against African Americans who were also Christians, they heard the normal church teachings and it didn't affect them. They didn't stop and think and realize that what they were doing was completely against what we're taught. They go to church and they would learn you know, to love their neighbors and to be kind and to do the best that they can for the people that they love and who they're near and yet they would go out and they would go to a fellow Christian, a fellow a black person, and they would accuse them of some heinous crime that was definitely like unwarranted, they didn't do anything, and they'd string them up without a judge or a jury or anything. And this goes fundamentally against what they were just being taught to do. So it's hypocritical, basically. The lynching tree is parallel to the cross of Jesus Christ. We're exploring how white Americans use Christianity to justify lynching in America. And the second thing is the representation of the lynching cross and how that corresponds directly to the cross that Jesus was um, crucified on. We just want to do a demonstration of a lynching tree seeing how, in pertaining to religion, this is mostly a Christian thing that people did in the early 18th century, and just went throughout most of the 20th century too, with the Civil Rights Movement, and just how Christians did do this to other people, and to fellow Christians, mind you. When you go back to the lynching tree, um, many people were fearing for their lives. And it was a, a huge display. Multitudes of people would watch, exactly like multiple peop, multitudes of people watched Jesus die. A lot of people on a daily basis, or every Sunday, or how often, depending on whatever southern region it was in, I mean, it could be different for places in Texas, or Mississippi, or Arkansas. But these particular places would have multitudes of people watching. And it was perfectly normal. Like it was okay for that to happen. And that's, that's the, one of the biggest shocks because these people would come out of church on Sunday and talk about, you know, love your neighbor and, and all that stuff. But their ideology was propelled by their beliefs, by their religion, that they didn't consider black people as human. Okay? They didn't think that black people were equal. And so that's the whole ideal of, of white supremacy. These people are, are not equal, okay? They're evil, they're from the devil, whatever you want to explain it. So we have to make sure we keep them down. We have to make sure that we control them. And so those two forms, as far as crucifixion and the lynching tree, are practically synonymous. There's a lot of people who are really, really passionate about this project, really passionate about this issue, but they didn't have the back, you know, they didn't have the support, or they didn't have the drive to go and do it. And now that they see that, you know, there are kids, or people in this case, who are actually doing their best to try and get this off of the ground, they're, we're getting a lot of support from this. And I knew about the whole lynching thing beforehand, but not to the scope. I didn't know that there were over 4,000 document, documented cases. Like, we don't even know how many mass graves there are with people who weren't even dignified with a statistic. So one of the most disappointing things about this history is the extent to which Christianity was able to, um, to assimilate what was happening and normalize it, naturalize it. And so in some case, of course, uh, professed Christians were involved in the lynching itself. They were certainly present as it was a public spectacle, but um, just as troublesome, I think, is the way in which um, such treatment of citizens and people 
it was normalized and naturalized, and so in some way um, um, was compatible with um, the way Christianity was understood and performed at the time. And so this begs the question of um, what kind of Christianity are Christians performing today? And are they unwittingly um, expressing um, a sense of compatibility with, with gross injustice and egregious wrongdoing? You know? And so I think that um, looking back at Christianity and the way in which it, um, it related to lynching is, um, is helpful for informing Christians today to be self-critical about the way in which um, the Christian faith is related to other sort of violent realities around us. So. Okay, great.